What's up, Cyber Club members? Miss Emily here with you for another fun-packed episode of Cyber Club. So are you enjoying your summer break so far? Summer break is the best. But sooner or later, you're sure to get sick of TikTok and YouTube and playing games all night. But don't worry, here at Cyber Club, we're hard at work coming up with fun and exciting activities to get you going. First up, I have got an amazing crystal growing experiment for you to try. So let's head over to Science Club and check it out. So this is the first in a series of crystal growing experiments that we'll be doing this summer using different ingredients and techniques that you can do at home. This first one is really easy and you don't need any weird ingredients for it. In fact, there's a good chance that you have the main ingredient in your bathroom cabinet. So what is the not so secret ingredient? Epsom salt. Yep, that stuff your grandma soaks her feet in. Add to that water, food coloring, or watercolor paint, and something for the crystals to grow on, and you've got everything you need to make some really cool crystals. I measured out a cup of Epsom salt in each bowl. The mixture is the same, I just didn't have two of the same size glass bowls. Now I'm going to add a cup of very hot water. I just let my faucet run for like 10 seconds to get it hot, but make sure you're very careful and have a grown up with you for this. Now you want to mix it until the salt dissolves. You know how you can dissolve stuff in water, of course. Just take a packet of Kool-Aid, for example. But did you know that water has a limit to what it can dissolve? So if you kept adding Kool-Aid powder, eventually the powder wouldn't mix anymore and would just sit on the bottom of your pitcher or glass. Well, that's what we're doing. We've added just enough Epsom salt to the water that if we added any more, it wouldn't dissolve. This is called a super saturated solution, and that's what we'll be using to make our crystals. It takes a long time to dissolve it all, so be patient. Now add some food coloring or liquid watercolor if you want your crystals to be colored, and mix it well. Now we need to add some kind of impurity for our crystals to grow off of. I'm going to use some sand for this one and just some extra Epsom salt for this one to see how it affects the crystal growth. You could also use a small stone or really anything. It would be interesting to try a variety of different things and see what happens. Now immediately refrigerate the mixtures and leave them overnight. Make sure you put them in a spot where they won't be disturbed. It's the rapid cooling from the hot water to the cold refrigerator that will help form the crystals. And now for the moment of truth. Pour out any remaining liquid and check out your crystals. Wow, they look like tiny sea urchins. Look at those spikes. Let's check out the green batch. These look completely different. All right, let's see what we got here. They're pretty stuck in here, and they seem kind of fragile, so I'm going to carefully use a butter knife and try to pry them out. That's about all the solid ones. The rest are separate. They kind of look like a slushy. Wow, these look more like what I think of when I think of crystals. They're beautiful. I love this color. It would be interesting to put some of these and the loose orange needles back into another batch of super saturated solution and see what grows off of them. I'm gonna dry these and I'll be right back. Check these out. I cannot believe that these grew from Epsom salts. They're beautiful. I found out what type of crystal this is. It's called a needle crystal or a spike crystal and they can be very thin and fragile or larger and thicker, just like ours are. Amazing! Hey, so I was Googling spike crystals and I found this. Check this out. These crystals are gigantic. This cave is located in Chihuahua, Mexico, and it contains some of the largest crystals ever found. When it was accessible, the cave was extremely hot, with air temperatures reaching up to 136 degrees with 90 to 99% humidity. 
The cave is relatively unexplored because without proper protection, people can only endure approximately 10 minutes of exposure at a time. It's reflooded now though and full of the same mineral rich water that led to those crystals growing in the first place. I wonder how big they'll be when it drains again. Snack, Snack time! <laughs> Is it that time again? Alright, let's head over to Cyber Cooking Club for a delicious and easy to make frozen treat. The ingredients we'll be using are two very ripe bananas, a half a cup of peanut butter, a fourth of a cup of milk, three fourths of a cup of wood topping, and a half a cup of milk chocolate morsels, and of course a popsicle mold or something else to freeze them in. You want to use very ripe bananas because that's when they're the sweetest. Add to that your peanut butter, and if you don't have a blender, you can use a food processor or beaters or your mussels. I forgot to add one fourth cup of milk. That's better. Pour it out into a bowl and add the whipped topping. This will add a little bit of sweetness and also help make the popsicles creamy. Then just microwave the chocolate until it's melted. Now take your popsicle mold or whatever you're using and add a spoonful of the banana mixture. Then a spoonful of chocolate more banana, and top it off with some more chocolate. Try and be neater than I was. Now all we have to do is stick them in the freezer and wait. Eventually. Around two to three hours depending on your freezer. Enjoy! Those were delicious and a great way to use up those spotty bananas. If you have a peanut allergy, just leave the peanut butter out and add a little bit more with topping. Last but not least, I have a really cool art project for us to try using sand to paint a picture instead of, well, me. Let's check it out. First are supplies. You'll need either a very thick piece of paper or a cardboard or a canvas or canvas board. You'll also need some glue and some colored sand a pencil to sketch out your design, and an old paintbrush to brush out the glue. To get prepared, I laid out a big piece of scrap paper into my work. I've drawn a simple design with big shapes on my canvas, and I've poured my sand into some cups with a spoon and some water for my brush. Now I'm going to use my glue to trace the middle shape and smooth it out with my wet brush. The thicker you apply the glue, the thicker the sand will be, and the longer it'll take to dry. Now sprinkle on the sand. I think I'll do this outside shape in blue too, so I'll do that now. But only do one color at a time so you can save your excess sand. Let it dry for a few minutes and then move on to the next shapes. You can use a paintbrush to guide the sand too. It's important to let the glue dry between colors or else the new color will stick to the other colors. I used a hair dryer to speed it up because I'm impatient. Now that we've blocked out the colors, we can go back in with some details. Pretty cool. If you want to try sand painting without the mess, check out this game I found. It's also available free to play on the App Store and Google Play and it's really fun and relaxing. You can also upload your work to share it with other players when you're done. That's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know it can be hard in the summer and all, but try and spend at least an hour off your devices each day doing something hands-on. Stay tuned to this channel and we'll keep giving you ideas how to do that and have a lot of fun while you do. 
Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.